Snakes have become adapted to almost every environment, including even the sea, as this one has. Uh, it doesn't often bite, but it does have an extremely powerful venom, so I'm not going to handle it, but I will help it a little with this stick. As you can see, it has a very flattened paddle at the end of its tail, but on land it's pretty helpless. However, if I assist it in getting into the sea, and now it's in its element. Sea snakes have had to modify many of the features that enabled their far distant ancestors to colonize the land. They still have a lung with which to breathe air, like other snakes, but they can also absorb oxygen from the seawater through their skin. Salt inevitably gets into a sea snake's body, but the snake manages to get rid of that by excreting it from a gland under its tongue. It also needs to drink fresh water. So, in calm seas, it waits at the surface for rain. Sea snakes really are truly marine creatures. They can live out here in the open ocean. And the only clue you have to their link with the land is that they have to come up every quarter of an hour or so for a gulp of air. Most sea snakes, like this barbellid species, hunt fish. They have one of the most lethal venoms known, which kills almost instantaneously. And that is a very important quality if you hunt fast-swimming, ocean-going prey. But paradoxically, the most highly specialized sea snake of all has abandoned venom altogether. It has a beak like a turtle and a wholly different way of feeding. Reef fish don't like to have it around. They mob it. doesn't even retaliate. It's not interested in them. It's after their eggs. These, the fish, have stuck to the stony branches of the coral. The snake's hardened, turtle-like top lip enables it to scrape them off. It's such a slow-moving browser that algae and other small organisms grow on its skin as they do on the bottom of a boat. <laughs> 